In this episode of Drinking Made Easy, we visit the beach. Steve disappoints a local brewer. I make fresh ice cubes. Hey! And we witness a slushy showdown. It's Drinking Made Easy, San Diego. I'm Zane Lamprey. My job is to drink. I'm traveling the country with my buddies Mark Ryan and Steve McKenna as we explore the local drinking cultures, customs, and cocktails. Along the way, we'll soak in the local flavor in an effort to make drinking easy. Our next stop is Stone Brewery, one of Southern California's most significant breweries. As the saying goes, start at the beginning. Let's start at the beginning. Let's start at the beginning. It's the first beer that we ever produced back when we started the brewery in 1996. This was the first one you guys made? Yes, Stone Pale Ale. Which, by the way, it's not the easiest one to make, right? Because a pale ale should be a very balanced beer. When we came out with this, this yeah. was not considered to be a balanced beer. It was very hot forward for the time. OK, but, but it's the same as it was back then. It is the same. Ah. Going around the country and tasting different IPAs or hop forward beers, this one feels balanced to me. Very balanced in comparison to that. But you are in the home, the birthplace of hop forward beers. Stone Brewing Company, one of the progenitors of the West Coast IPA style, which we'll get to in a minute. Hold on. <laughs> now what's your flagship? I think Stone IPA is our flagship. It's the one we're best known for. I pour us a couple of Stone IPAs. There you go. Some on the rim. There is a point off for that. So now, this is a uh, West Coast IPA, a San Diego IPA. On the East Coast, I think IPAs are a little different. You're right. Why California and hops? Because I don't know that we produce a lot of hops in California. Am I correct? No, but we are experts on how to use them. I have a hoppy question. I think hoppy beer is addicting. The flavor profile is one that really compels you because once you get past that initial hump of acclimatizing your palate to the hoppy oh, beer. It's a surprise. Most people start off their beer drinking right. with an American lager, a macro beer. Travesty. Lowest common denominator. No, MCD, most common denominator. That you can't make it low, you can't put it low, because that's what most people drink. But they need to experience this. And when they taste hops for the first time, it's a little bit of a surprise. My first beer wasn't a craft beer. I drank the fizzy yellow stuff for years yeah. until I discovered the great cornucopia of all this wonderful flavor characteristics. And you know what? What happened as a result? I got pissed off. Because wow. I felt those years had been stolen from me by the lie that the man was telling me via his TV commercials. This is Steve's first trip into the world of beer. And when he started this tour, he was MCD. But he has now found something that he is a, a fan of. And I'm going to go find it, because you All have right. it right here. I'm going to bring it up here. The Arrogant Bastard is a beer that you guys came up with. And the name itself is very jarring. Well, wait a minute. We have to give the Arrogant oh, Bastard toast first. It goes like this. Is there a saying? Here's to me. We created the beer because we love beers. They're just over the top. Really big character. 7.2%. OK. And at the time, again, there was nothing else like it out there. Overly hopped and overly malty at the same time. And what Arrogant Bastard is all about is arrogance is the higher end, more refined, the understanding, understated arrogance. Like, yeah, that's right. There's no way you can hide behind calling a beer arrogant bastard. You knew what it is that you were doing when you did it. I was expressing the true inner character of the beer, realizing that most people, they have no taste. When we look at the public, the public is a mass entity, right? Yes. As individuals, some of us have taste. OK. The public, public has no taste. The public waters down their opinion to meld with everyone else's opinion. Right. OK. So this is something that has no patience for that kind of, just make it friendly to, for everybody. No risk, no reward. Yeah. So if you learn nothing, please learn that beer is meant to be appreciated and not chugged. I don't know what you're talking about. We need you to appreciate those, please. Says appreciation. Steve's about to show us what he learned about beer appreciation on this Drinking Made Easy journey. I do not condone this. Is, this is, people are, are, are just are rolling right now. There's all the beers right here. 
Do, do not, no, no, you, you are above that, all of you. I just want to say for the yeah. record, while I've had a, a really great time, I've enjoyed meeting you, and I believe, I still believe in your potential. I am personally uh, really disappointed in you right now. Yeah. Yeah. Listen, you're not the first. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so good. I suspect that that's Listen, true. Don't beat yourself up about it. <laughs> Coming up on Drinking Made Easy, Steve discovers a hidden bar behind a wall.